Welcome to part two of the concept map. In this particular episode, we're going to have a look at uh, doing some energizers and how to use the results from the concept map to develop the spelling skills of your learners. Now, if you'd watched part one, you will have seen that the learners would use the concept map to develop a whole lot of words and vocabulary. And one of the great advantages of that is that they're beginning to talk about words um, that they're not so sure about how to spell and so on. And so I just asked the learners, you know, is there a word that's really tough to spell? And even though there's going to be a couple of people in the class who know how to spell it, the idea is that uh, they're not too sure about how to spell it. So, for example, the word might be chemical. We saw in part one uh, when we used the concept map to look at drench, that chemical might be one of the words that popped up. So they asked me how to spell chemical, and as a tutor, I won't write the board, uh, the word chemical on the board. I'll ask them a couple of questions instead. So working in groups, the word is chemical, and I say, okay, uh, in groups, have a guess, how many syllables do you think are in chemical? And so they have a quick discussion. Now, for some groups, they're going to know that straight away, chemical. For other groups, they're going to have a little discussion about that, and they're not going to be too sure about the syllables. Now, here's the great thing. The great thing is... There's going to be a learner in that class who's not sure about the uh, syllables, but he or she is not going to say anything. So they get to kind of participate, and it's worthwhile just uh, giving that time and letting that come out. So eventually a learner will yell out, you know, three. And what I do is I write three lines on the board to represent those syllables. But it's not finished yet. Then I ask them to work out in groups how many letters they think are in each of those syllables. And so we know that there's four, one, and three is in chem, eh. Cal. I have a little competition and give uh, each of the groups points depending on how they do. So now they've kind of got something invested in finding out how chemical is spelt. They know there's three syllables. They're going to know that there's four letters in the first syllable and one in the middle and three in the last one. And uh, there it is, of course, chem -acal. And so uh, that's a good opportunity to talk about syllables and so on. And all of this would happen very quickly, you know, within one minute. Chemical, and you might uh, clap that out. That's good for people who struggle to spell, to learn how to break things into syllables. And you know, there's always uh, a group or some people who think that chem, chem, might be spelt with a K. And it's okay, so you want to discuss that. And if people say that chem is spelt with a K, I write that on the board. And then I uh, remind them that chemical will let them know it's actually spelt with a CH. And usually other learners will know that. And then once we've got the CH, which is the part of the word they might have had difficulty with, uh, then I just link that to a couple of other words that also begin with the same letter combination and have the same sound. Character, chemist, chrome, and so on. A second thing that I like to do with the learners is after they've done the first concept map, is I get them to yell out the words and we can write them on the board, you know, put them all around. And one of the great things is, is that uh, they can see the correct spelling. So I tell them not to worry about the spelling when they're writing it down. You know, just get as many things down on paper as they can. So when we're writing it up on the board, that's when we get the spelling correct and we'd look at it. And then I'd ask them, you know, what are the seven hardest uh, words to spell here, do you think? Or what are the seven biggest words? And uh, we'll generate a bit of a list. And then what I do is I take those words that they have decided are the seven hardest and usually we all agree on five of them. There might be a couple that we don't. But then I would just use those words and quick energizers throughout the week. So for example, an energizer is a two or three minute activity that just kind of reorients the learners. Maybe they come back in from lunch and they're, you know, struggling to uh, get back into the learning sort of stream of the day. So an energizer is a really good way to do it. And just as an example, what I might do is I might put up one of those words on the board and I say something like, Two minutes, go, make as many words as you can using the letters in that word. And then uh, I might use the word drench or whatever other word they've got. And they'll have to come up with as many words as they can. And they get scored um, for each word that's correct. They get a point for each letter in that word. Two minutes, three minutes, and then maybe another minute marking it. But the point is, is that the energizers that we use throughout the week uh, will use those words that they've identified. At the end of that week, usually most learners are pretty familiar with those words.